Okay, now it's time to talk a little bit about table design and table relationships. And this is one of the most difficult but important concepts to grasp when you're first learning access. The reason these concepts are so important is because the whole power of access revolves around the ability to separate your data into different tables like we've done here and then create relationships between those tables so that they work together seamlessly. And as you've been going through this course, you may be wondering why did we divide these tables into two tables rather than just creating one flat spreadsheet? And the best way for me to explain that is to show it to you in Excel. So let me jump over to Excel and show you. So this spreadsheet essentially shows you what our entire database with both of our tables would look like if it was just on one Excel spreadsheet. And on this small scale, it probably doesn't look so bad. But I'm going to show you a couple of things that pose challenges here so that you can see why even on this small of a scale, with only eight columns of data, it would be advantageous to use it in Access with multiple tables. So let me just highlight a few things here, and I'll explain to you what each of them is about. So in this spreadsheet, we have our employee ID, their first name, last name, home phone, their office ID, the city, state, and phone number of their office. So let's say that this is for our employees who are salespeople in our retail store. And this is a small section of our order tracking system. So we have Bob Blake in the system as employee number one. So we can identify him whenever he makes an order. But what if Bob Blake quits? and we want to take him out of the system. Well, if we delete this whole row, you'll notice it not only deletes Bob, but it also deletes the office in which he works. And if you look through the rest of our list, we don't have another entry for our office in Boise, Idaho. So by deleting Bob, we also are deleting the entire office. And on a small scale like this, that isn't extremely significant. But if we have tons of data surrounding this Boise office, and we have to delete it in order to get rid of Bob Blake, you can see the problems that that would start to pose. So by putting this office information in a separate table that is referred to with our office ID, then we can delete Bob out of the employee table without affecting any of the information connected to the Boise office. So that's the first reason. Okay, next let's look at this light purple color here to find another issue that this flat table is creating. So we have the information for Los Angeles, California office in here three times. And again, on such a small scale, this really isn't a huge issue. But imagine that this information goes in every time one of these employees puts an order into the system. So that could be hundreds or thousands of times a day. And then imagine that we have 10 additional columns of information for this branch office, including the address, zip code, store manager names, and so on. If this data is being entered into the system over and over again, thousands of times a day, it's taking up huge amounts of space in our database. And with a database of that scale, that's going to have a significant drain on the effectiveness and the speed of your database. But if these were only listed once in one table, like they are in our access database, then the repetition wouldn't be such a big deal. Another issue that this causes by having this information repeated over and over is that if we want to change the telephone number for the office in Los Angeles, California, we have to go through, again, possibly thousands of locations in our spreadsheet and change this number. Whereas if this is in its own table, and there's only one instance of this that's referred to over and over by an office ID number, then we just change this number once, and every time you have an employee or an order number connected to that office ID number two, it'll refer to the new corrected phone number. Okay, let's take a look at the dark purple real quick. Let's say that someone typed this in as Seattle without an E. Now when we go to pull a report for our boss of all the employees transactions, in Seattle, we're only going to come up with one, two transactions. We're going to be missing this third one because of this data entry error. But in Access, we can restrict the way this data is entered. So you're not typing it in. 
you're selecting from a pre-existing list of city names and by doing that we would have avoided that error and again on a smaller scale like this it doesn't seem like a huge deal but when you're talking about thousands of transactions in a day if three percent of your entries have typos you're talking about 30 transactions that aren't going to show up correctly when you do your report okay so that's that one and then finally let's look at the light green down here at the bottom the reason I have this area highlighted is that if we wanted to add a new office location we wouldn't be able to do that without also adding in a new employee in this field otherwise we'd have blanks in our database so that's just a simple introduction to some of the advantages of breaking this up into multiple tables and there's actually a name for some of the kind of rules that I've just been talking about and it's called table normalization and the basic principles of it if you're interested in looking into this more are called first normalization form second normalization form and third normalization form there are more of these kind of basically sets of rules but the first three are the kind of most critical ones for most even large databases but they have to do with these concepts that we're talking about about not having repeating data uh, about not having unrelated data on the same line and things like that so let me take this formatting off and that's why we broke it up into a table that's dedicated just to the employees with the employee specific information and a table that's dedicated just to the office information and that specific information because that way each table can stand on its own with its own set of related information and just to give you an example we wouldn't want to take the last name field from the employee list and put it over in the office list and that's pretty obvious because it just kind of seems silly but once you get a strong grasp of the idea of database design more subtle things like repeated office names or locations start to seem obvious as well.